Hello and welcome back to another one of my Max MSP tutorial videos. Uh, in this video, we're going to learn how to do some sample slicing stuff because it's something I get asked about a lot because Max can do a lot of cool stuff with audio and samples are fun to slice up. Before we jump into it though, I just want to say real quick, a uh, hundred of you have subscribed to this channel. I really appreciate that. I'm glad you're learning something. We're still here. We're still making videos and uh, we're going to get into it right now. Okay, so the first thing you need to know when it comes to audio stuff and doing stuff with audio samples in Max MSP is the buffer object. This is our best friend. Um, and you see it says it stores audio samples. So if we create a buffer and we give it a name, something like sample, um, and then a duration like 4,000 milliseconds, and then two channels, it creates this cool little object for us and we can double click on it and open up the buffer window and see we now have a four second long buffer um, and if we want to put a sample in our buffer we can use two different messages we're going to use the message replace you could also use the message read but these uh, function differently if we use the message replace when we click it and pull open an audio file like um, something like this one um we see now that our audio buffer is as long as our sample that is because of the replace message if we use the read message um we would only take the first four seconds of whatever sample we put in there and the reason it's the four seconds is because we defined it our buffer to be that size so whatever size you define the buffer to be and you use the read message it's only going to take that long of that audio sample fun stuff um, so yeah, use replace really if you want the full sample, no matter how long the sample is. Um, and with that, we need to actually get some information out about this sample. We need to know how long it is. And to do that, we are going to use this info tilde object that reports information about a sample. And the way that works is you give it the same name as your buffer. So both of these are called sample, um, even with the capital S, because caps is important. And then out of these outlets, we get a bunch of information, sampling rate, instrument info, sustain loop start, there's N, blah, blah, blah. Um, one of these outlets gives us the total time. Yes, it's this one. And that is what we want to see. So if we connect that into a float number box and send us a bang, bam. This is the total time of our audio sample. Um, now, if we want to make slices of our sample, we need to know the exact length of the time of the whole sample. And we need to know how many slices and how long each slice is. So I'm going to arbitrarily pick the number 64 right now because um, I'm thinking about using like one of those MIDI drum pads and it's like an eight by eight grid. So an eight by eight jitter matrix even um, would give you 64 samples. So if we take our total time and we divide it by how many samples we want and you know, you could always adjust this value to later to to meet your needs so i'm going to put that how many slices we want um it's going to give you a time value that is the total time of each slice so we bang and uh based on the length of this sample if we wanted 64 slices of it each slice would have to be this long. So that's a very important number. And with this number, we're going to start to do some math stuff to get each slice out. Um, but to do that, before we even get into the math, we need to be able to see our audio sample. We can do it by double clicking on the buffer, as I pointed out, but uh, that's a lot of work. We don't want to double click on the buffer. We just want to see it. Um, and to do that, to look inside a buffer without having to double click on it, you need the object waveform, which is a buffer viewer and editor. And it looks exactly like the inside of that window when you double click on that. And if we want it to be linked to this buffer, just like pretty much every other audio object, we need to give it the same name. So we're going to say load mess set, which is the message to set the name of the buffer. And we're going to give it the name sample. And if we patch that in there and cl double click on it bam there is our audio sample perfect we can see that now and i'm gonna move that down here perfect and let's move this up here cool so now that we have our total time and uh we can see our sample we see one of these inlets is the selection start 
and this one is the selection end. So this is going to be where we want to put our start and end time for each slice to see that we which slice we have in our window. And this is what's going to require that fun math stuff. So I'm going to create a float number box and this is going to be the number which is which slice we want. Um, and this value, the maximum of this is going to match how many slices we want. So 63 technically will be this. It's going to start with zero and the max is going to be 63. 63 is going to be the absolute last slice of this. Zero is going to be the absolute first slice. Um, let's just do the math to make that work. So to make that work, we have to multiply which slice we want by the total time value. Um, so if we say multiply one and we plug this into the right to be which slice we want and our total time into the left, the value we are going to get out of this uh, multiplication operation is that starting time for each sample based on which slice we want. So I type in one and then we click bang here and it's the same uh, as this because that would be the starting time for this second slice. Uh, if we wanted, you know, somewhere in the middle, something like our 30th slice, we click bang, and this is the time value in our sample for where that 30th slice would be. Um, and that is what we are going to patch into the start time selection of this. Now, if we want to figure out the end time, we just need to add whatever this number is to this number, because this is the total time of each slice for 64 slices. So if we just add the total time to the end, then we will get um, we will get the ending value because we're jumping that time in the total slice. So for slice 30 and uh, that, there you go. We hit the bang and now we see this is the 30th slice and we could move this up and get that's the 39th slice. We can move this down to zero. Um, and whoa, okay, there's an error there, but we'll address that in just a second. If I hit bang again, you see actually it is the zeroth slice. So cool, we are, this is working, but we have to click way too many buttons to get this to work right now. We wanna automate everything so it's a little bit easier to work with. Um, and to do that, we're going to use our good friend, the trigger object, which just does orders uh, max functions in a very specified order um, and you can use it with a few different functions so we're going to use uh, we're going to say T to instantiate the trigger object B to send out a bang and then F and it works right to left like everything a max does so this object is going to pass a float value out of this outlet first and then immediately send a bang out of this outlet and we're going to patch that right into here because we want this float value to be set uh, in this cold outlet, but then we want it to perform the arithmetic function. So we're gonna send the bang into this one to get it to output. So now when we say which slice we want, you see it is going up, um, it's going up the buffer and picking each slice all the way up until I said what the max would be, which is 63. Now, if we go backwards, uh, it's working, but you noticed uh, earlier when I had like this value and then I went back to zero, it jumps and it catches, it it grabs this huge slice. Um, that's not based in this math. That's actually a timing error thing with max MSP. Um, we can easily fix that though with our good object, Buddy. And uh, Buddy is going to synchronize arriving data. And it's kind of kind of tricky because you have to cross the wires, but have no fear. Um, if we put our end in point into the right outlet and our starting point into the left. And then this is this outlet and this one becomes that outlet and they are crisscrossed. Then now we see, uh, oh, nope, these have to be crossed too. Sorry, like I said, buddy can be kind of confusing, 
Um, but now, okay, yep, we're getting the right slice size. And as we go up and down, even if we jump around, it's selecting exactly the right slice. And that is because Buddy is now synchronizing uh, the timing of these value data coming through. Cool, so we can see which slice we want and it works uh, with any sample and it will work with any amount of slices. Now we just need to do the very last step, which is here, the sound. Um, and to do that, I'm going to use the MC objects, which come with Max 8. If you don't have Max 8, you can just use the regular version of these objects, but I think MC is uh, a bit nicer and a bit cleaner audio-wise. So we're gonna use those. Um, but again, regular objects of these objects exist. So I'm gonna type in mc.groove and groove uh, like info and like our waveform object knows to reference the buffer by name. So it just needs the same name, which is capital S sample. Um, and with MC, we're going to define that we want two channels. You could do more. Um, and I'm also gonna say loop one because I just like it when the sound loops. And the way MC Groove works then is it needs a signal to determine the playback rate. So first we're gonna connect it to our easy deck output so we get uh, we can hear the sound that is being sent to our speakers. And then with an MC SIG, which converts a float number into a signal value, we can patch that into the top of MC Groove and then give this a float number value and if I turn the speakers on now and I turn this to one it's going to play um, it's going to play the buffer from start to finish at normal speed you can change this and play it like double speed or make it negative and play it backwards um, Groove it gives you a lot of cool fun playback options um, but as I had just said it's playing the entire buffer sample it's not playing the little slice we want and that's because we have to define these uh start and stop points with the same start and stop points coming out of our buddy object so we just crisscross those again um and then say which slice we want something like that and then we turn this on and now we're getting just that slice and we can you know Change the playback speed, like I said, play it backwards, change which slice we're on. Whatever you want to do, basically. This only works right there. Yeah, so... <laughs> From here, uh, it's pretty much whatever you want to do. You get your sample slices. You can define how many slices you want. These range work in tandem. Um, this buffer can store any audio sample, and it's a fun time. Um, you can automate this to like play randomly. You know, you could do what I was saying, the eight by eight drum pad, and have each one of those trigger a different sample. Basically, you know, the world is your oyster at this point. Your imagination is your only limitation. Hey, uh, real quick, adding in post-editing, I totally forgot to mention this, but you see this right outlet of the buffer? Uh, patch that into the button of this info object, so that way it updates the info every time you replace the sample. Super important. Um, so I hope that was useful, and I hope you learned something valuable. And if, uh, of course, as always, if you like this, please, you know, like and subscribe. Um, so it lets me know that, you know, you learned something valuable from this. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments down below. I'm always happy to try to explain things further. Um, and yeah, that's about it. Uh, I'll see you in the next one.